Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. Is Like seriously, this size 2 boy can just pitch explosives like they are in professional baseball league, deploy more mines in an instant than anyone else could, and just fucking walk over them without getting blown up like a goddamn explosive Jesus. Its core power is even just more fucking explosion, and remember, this is a Harrison armory frame, you can get even more explosive with their core bonus, so even though this thing has low repair cap and slow as molasses speed, it doesn't bloody matter. It also has 15 sensor range, and a very painful 12 save target, because fuck everything I guess. In the following 40 builds, you will frequently find stub cannon, because consistent damage and knockback is nice, and you usually get more limited charge than you could ever finish anyway, grounding charge, because it's there already and pulling or slowing down people is nice, gravity gun, to suck people into a pile of explosive, and repulsor field, so you can explode safely. And of course, all the grenade charges, let's just list out all of them because you will see them like a lot. This includes the good old hex charges which just explodes, smoke charges that provide soft cover, the breach charges which can also blow up terrain, flash charges that can blind enemies easily, mesmer charges that can control enemies movement, havoc charges that just burn, blink charges that can teleport people around, and spike charges that knock people around. There's also roller charges which also knocks back people, is a bit weird to use with Iskander, but it only costs one license point to get. Also honorably mention includes Clamp Bomb, which since Iskander has so many systems to slow down enemies, it can be a very painful option, and when using it on slow as snail NPC, they are dead, I recommend a Minotaur ally. As for the roles, Iskander is quite interesting because its traits support both artillery and striker roles, since you can both launch explosive far away and deploy a ton of explosives right next to you to push someone into them, which is why there's a ton of striker controller around, but there's also plenty of other roles too. Anyway, let's start with the most numerous builds, the striker controller. This is playing like it's DND limited spell slots, the most baseline Iskander build I could find, you have plenty of grenades, integrated ammo feed and grease monkey for even more charges, plus accelerate, gravity gun, and stub cannon to knock or move hostile into them. This is basically how most Iskander builds are gonna look like, with piles of payload packed onto them, it's a good thing that it only has 6 systems points, otherwise it's gonna be ridiculous. You will also notice that Iskander really really loves knockback or just moving enemy in any way possible, because Iskander really needs them for galaxy brain planning, and gravity gun is real convenient for it. This is ping pong champion, another gravity gun packing Iskander, at long range, you can just keep throwing excommunicate and wandering nightmare, then use gravity gun to keep pulling people into them, if they get close, X bat annihilator with Jaeger round can easily knock them back, this build even has vanguard, so nearby enemy will be in a world of pain. Also, this thing has open door, giving it 17 save target, good luck passing that save roll. But what if you don't want to use gravity gun, this is one more old fashioned war, a super massive Krakatoa packing Iskander, which of course, has knock back, add in heavy gunner, and you can even knock back more enemies that are now immobilized, add in spike charges on top of that, you can knock back even more enemies into even more mines. If you get shot, Gunslinger 2 also gives stub cannon reaction fire to knock back enemy, there's just knock back everywhere. Plus, hardpoint reinforcement also lets you step on your own mine with damage resistance to bomb nearby enemies, but I recommend getting repulsor field for that. This is dragged through 10 million legos, a heavy gunner gravity gun Iskander because heavy gunner works with gravity gun and more gravity gun attack is always good, siege specialist even lets you knock away enemy that are right in front of you, and if you need to pull people in instead, you have magnetic cannon for that. Both javelin and clamp bomb serve as good damage source, whether the enemy want to move or not. Center of gravity is a Fomorian Iskander, who decided that instead of moving enemies with gravity, you just move them by choking them, then just repulse them into a pile of mines, or you just destroy them anyway with an uncle charged blade by brawling with them. Plus, with Juggernaut, this Iskander will go through anything. Damned if you do is a Tempest drone commanding Iskander, using the drone or spike charges to easily knock enemy into the mines, 
heavy gun or gassed nexus can also just shoot at any range with senti main for a little more pain, integrated light nexus adds on too, and if anyone gets too close, you have a super massive stub cannon. Raising cane is a rather strange iskander, one that clogs up the battlefield with covers instead of mines, but with seismic ripper, these covers work just like mine anyway, and of course, it has vanguard krakatoa and explosive vents to keep things away, it even has enough heat cap to overcharge safely. That said, this build feels like it missed the entire point of Iskander because it has zero charges. Blunderbuss is an Iskander with Beckoner, a very useful invade systems that can pull people together, along with blink charges to teleport groups of people, making exploding them very easy, or just blasts them with shotguns, both of them, auto-stabilized daisy cutter is not something you should underestimate. And here's Scarlet Asteroid, an Iskander made to swim in the Tesseract with free EVA system from Spaceborn, anyone that comes in the field will be very slow compared to you, so you can easily just slap clamp bomb on them, with sentinel drone to punish them if they attack you. Plus, you could use ace for more mobility or even use supersonic to chase down people even outside of the tesseract zone, add in heavy gunner HMG, and nobody could really escape from you. Next, there's my city now, a kinetic hammer wielding iskander that want to smash head in, you basically just put down mines, smash people's face in with the hammer, use stub cannon to knock people into the mines, and use repulsor field when the time is right, which is almost always. Now that we have seen a bunch of Iskander builds that like to throw people into the mine, there's also, a couple Iskander that decided to go harder on the striker part. This is Demo Knight, that can fly, because Demo Knight can totally fly, it has a super massive Terashima with Jaeger Kus 2 to go completely insane and hammer URPL to take full advantage of combined arms, then knock the target straight into a pile of explosive, but with 5 charges, this just doesn't feel like enough explosions, it definitely have enough sword though. It's about mines, you use a drill for mining is an Iskander with combat drill, that also completely missed the point of Iskander but who care, just immobilize someone with web jaw, charged stake, or whatever and just drill, you even have heat fall to do all that in one turn with overcharge, tesseract can also immobilize enemy but you might need to fly or be on a high ground. Finally, 0G bar fight is a DD288 Iskander because of course, using the power of tesseract to slow down your victim enough that you can chase them and punch them into a mine or something. Otherwise, you could just choke the crap out of them with TSS3 and Spaceborne. And that's all on the striker controller Iskander, which kinda surprised me by just the sheer amount of it but then again, since Iskander can just plop down 3 mines like nothing which can give quite an explosive result, and quite a lot of forced movement systems have somewhat short range, I can see why people love striker Iskander. Now, let's move on to the artillery controller builds. A Symphony of Screams and Shrapnel is an Iskander that packs warp rifle, blink charges, and heavy gunner gravity gun to move people anywhere it wants at range, even onto some explosives. It even has Horo S1 to move or jam people, maybe moving them into a row of javelin for tons of damage, and the faster they go, the more pain they will feel. Stormbringer is a good way to move people, and a relaxing stroll does that, using Sharanga and Gandava missiles to send people flying anywhere it wants, with roller charges in case people gets too close for comfort, though it has skirmisher to get away anyway. Or heck, why not do it with Pinyaka missiles with this flying Iskander build called Nuclear Launch Detected. Now with Nuclear Cavalier for even more damage, plus Mesmer charges and ground charges to make people go the direction you want. What about Bigger Boom, with Das Boom, and Iskander with Siege Cannon, which with Siege Specialist, could easily knock back a lot of enemies at once, even out of cover or into mine, and with external ammo feed, this thing can reload rather quickly. It's not even the only siege cannon Iskander build, this one comes with tesseract to slow or immobilize enemies so you can shoot them at range safely, and maybe knock them into some mines again, wow I'm repeating this phrase like way too much today. Looking for death clouds on a sunny day is a Sisyphus Iskander with auto gun, mimic gun, along with tesseract and clamp bomb combo again to bomb enemy to hell. The build also want to roll a 20 with Sisyphus, so the Iskander can activate its core power repeatedly in a mission with universal compatibility so it can cover the map in micro explosive every scene, the cleanup crew is going to complain for sure. Do you want an Azure Tachyon Lance Iskander build, well I'm not asking, this is there is no salvation, an Azure Tachyon Lance Iskander build, I'm actually not sure if this counts as a striker build or not because the submitter wants people to use grounding charge, ferris lash, and mag cannon to pull people in then fire the Tachyon Lance to burn them with its back blast. Honestly, it's better for allies to do that for you since you won't have action to spare, 
This build also has infiltrator to hit harder with the tachyon lance, blind someone nearby, and run away swiftly too, so it can be very slippery. Bring on the thunder is an Iskander with an auto stab supermassive expat arc projector plus heavy gunner, meaning you can easily chain up attack with the arc projector to knock back people even beyond range 10, who are going to find themselves stepping on mines frequently. And all the world mine is an, Annihilation Nexus Iskander, with full senti main talent plus Tempest and turret drones, this is gonna hurt. You can easily ping pong enemies around with Tempest, and knocking them into mine is probably their least of the worries, because with Beckoner, a lot of people are going to get ground up into paste. Finally, there's Explosion times Explosion, an Iskander that wants to have constant explosions, either with Slag Cannon to create exploding terrain, or Howitzer with Siege Stabilizer for long range bombardment, or just use Immolate and Purifying Code to explode mech system instead, and still have a bunch of explosives around. It even has Black Thumb Technophile combo to patch up the mech repeatedly, which kinda also makes it a support build but also not really, spoiler alert, there's only one support controller build, and it's not a battle taxi. And that's all on the artillery controller, even far away, there's plenty of methods to send enemy flying in any direction, making Iskander very dangerous at a distance or up close. With its bulk, Iskander can somewhat protect its smaller allies by being a bigger target in general, Iskander of course, is not designed to be a defender, but since when the Lancer community would let such a minor detail stop them. This is Black Hole, an Iskander with Horo S2 to make False Idol and Wandering Nightmare to stop enemy from ever reacting, and since the enemy will most likely be slowed, they are going to have a hard time moving, which with Heavy Gun or Gravity Gun, they will find themselves unable to move from their original spot at all. Definitely a good mech that can keep enemies from doing anything at all. This is What are you doing in my swamp? An Iskander with support shield and hard light defense system to keep allies safe from ranged bombardment, and if enemies are too close, you can repulse them back or pull them out with grounding mine, or just shoot them. And here's Iskander, I hardly know her, a Scylla heavy gunner Iskander that want to spam gravity gun like nothing else, with a Vorpal gun too. You can even use Siege Stabilizer to increase the range of both weapons to hit far away enemies with ease, it even has Leader and Spotter to support its allies as well. Well, that's it for the Defender Controller Iskander, you can definitely make Iskander with a Defender Controller builds, but whether it's good is something I'm not sure. Now, finally, the last category, the Support Controller. This is undoing the sins of the Endless, a Didymos Iskander that wants to keep its allies mobile, unhinged chronology, anti-linear time, and of course Didymos, these systems are good support tool, add in empathy and leader, this Iskander is really good at supporting, plus it still has some explosive charges and gravity gun for usual Iskander shenanigans. But yes, like you, I'm kinda a bit disappointed that there's no crazy Fomorian battle taxi build going on in this episode, considering Iskander is large, and wants limited charges, so it just seems kinda perfect for it. Which is why for the first time, I'm making my own bloody build, this is Bucephalus, a Fomorian battle taxi Iskander that wants a really good rider, it has 7 charges of Asso to cure anything and 7 charges of blink charges to get away from anything, gravity gun, stub cannon, and repulsor to knock back enemies, and with grease monkey, leader, and bonded, that's a lot of support. Does this thing work, I have no idea, but fuck it, here it is. Anyway, that's all 40 plus 1 Iskander builds finished reviewing, I would once again like to thank all the submitters for sending in their builds for this episode, there's really like dozens of way to get the amount of knockback and movement an Iskander wants and no true correct way to do it for every situation. Anyway, I'm not even going to show you the image for the next episode because you can probably guess it from all the twirling already, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.